guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Claire and you are watching another episode of my cake chemistry series, the one where I talk all about the science behind baking and a whole load of other stuff too. Boy, have I got a good one for you today. Well, I think so. Anyway, but before we get started, if you are enjoying these videos so far, please do remember to give them a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications button so that you don't miss any of the latest updates from me. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in the future, please do pop them in the comments below or come and say hello to me over on Instagram. If you have ever baked a homemade cake before, you'll know that it's probably only going to last a few days or maybe a week at best before it starts to dry out and be not so pleasant to eat. There are some exceptions of course, such as fruit cake, but generally a fresh cake is best eaten whilst it's, well, fresh. So why is it that shop-bought cakes have such a long shelf life? Now I've got a confession to make. A little while back, well actually no, a lot while back, I bought some Mr. Kipling cakes, a very popular brand here in the UK, for something that I needed at the time. But I also thought that I would do a little experiment and hold some of them back just to see how long they would actually last. Well, let's just say I forgot about these cakes and they kind of got left for a long time. Uh, a number of years, in fact. Possibly three, maybe even four. I don't know. And I've still got them. Here are my packs. I've got some <laughs> Mr. Kipling Battenbergs, mini ones, and classic French fancies. They are opened, let's just say I, I may well have eaten a few at the time and since I still had them I thought you know what I'm gonna make this video anyway and talk a little bit about the science behind the label. So I'm just going to um, take out one of these that's left in here. Wow, okay. Uh, not looking all that great. It's kind of lost its colour slightly. No visible signs of mould though, to be honest. It's just... Yeah, it's rock hard basically. <laughs> nice and stale. Probably going to be the same thing with the Battenbergs. Let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, they pretty much look the same as when I actually bought them. Again. Rock hard. Which is interesting. So why is it that these shop bought cakes really don't seem to go um, mouldy? So let's take a little look at the label, shall we? I'll pop it up on the screen in a minute. By the way, this is not intended to be one of those videos where it's like, the deadly truth behind your supermarket foods. I've got nothing against Mr. Kipling Cakes. Come on, we all love one of these now and again. I'm just here to share the science behind it. More out of interest than anything. So, First, we've got, you know, we've got some familiar ingredients here. So stuff that you would normally use in baking. Sugar, wheat flour, vegetable oils. Nothing weird or strange about that. We've got raising agents, sodium bicarbonate, or bicarbonate of soda. <laughs> Disodium diphosphate, oh, what's that? It's baking powder, I guess, yeah, baking powder. Um, so yeah, common stuff. However, there are a whole load of other ingredients which are specifically chosen to extend the shelf life, keeping the cake soft and moist for longer, whilst also being palatable. The first thing to notice is that you're generally not going to see any fresh eggs in these types of products. 
Mostly because it's cheaper but also a lot more convenient. Dried egg powder can be bought in bulk, stored in a cool dark place without any refrigeration and reconstituted 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 let's just forget that hydrated with water when required think about it it's a lot easier for big manufacturers to just buy in a load of dried egg powder rather than having to store lots of fresh eggs the same goes for milk which again is generally bought in and used in its dry form the next ingredient we will often see is potassium sorbate. This is a very common preservative in the food industry and it works by inhibiting mold and yeasts that may grow over time. Sorbitols in general are what we would call a polyol. These are essentially carbohydrates and they provide softness and moistness to baked goods as well as sweetening them and all this helps to extend the shelf life. Next up we have humectants or specifically glycerin. This is another example of a polyol. They have the ability to retain and preserve moisture because of their hygroscopic nature, that's a big word for you. And this keeps the cake nice and soft, prevents it from drying out as quickly. We also have various emulsifiers, mono and diglycerides of fatty acids, which prevent staling by delaying starch retrogradation. Emulsifiers also have a whole load of other functions, which I'm not going to go into right now, but I'll certainly talk more on this topic in the future. Another very common ingredient we often see on the label is xanthan gum. And you may well have heard of this, particularly if you do a lot of gluten-free baking. It's actually commonly used in the food industry as an additive. It stabilizes and prevents ingredients from separating as well as thickening and holding in gases for leavening. Again, I've done a whole separate video on xanthan gum if you're interested to find out more about this mysterious ingredient. And finally we have food colours. Not something that affects the shelf life but I thought I would briefly mention them anyway. Cochineal, or maybe it's cochineal, not entirely sure on that one, is a red food colour made from, wait for it, and you might want to hear this, bugs. Yeah. Sounds kind of gross, but this food dye, also known as red carmine, is still widely used in the food industry. The other colour we have in these cakes is lutein. Lutein is a carotenoid, and if you ever paid any attention in your biology lessons at school, you'll know that carotenoids are yellow-orange pigments commonly found in plants. You will also see various other sugars and vegetable oils in shop-bought cakes, all chosen to keep the costs down and extend the shelf life. Sugar is a natural preservative and vegetable oils generally add a lot of moisture whilst also being a hell of a lot cheaper than butter. So that's what's behind the label of some of our classic supermarket cakes we often see on our shelves. Nothing all that weird really, except for maybe the bug thing. Let's just not think about that. All in all, I'm always gonna prefer a homemade cake. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hoped you enjoyed it and also learnt something. <laughs> and I will see you again next week. Bye guys.